Welcome to Dying Generation. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Steven Scott Norfolk. What's going on, man? You know, hanging out, watching some college football because I'm so starved for football. <laughs> That's the only kind you're getting? Well, until tomorrow, yeah, because, like, for the last two years, I've always worked Sunday, so I haven't seen football in, like, two years. Aha, uh-huh, okay. Mm-hmm. Every okay, once in a while, I catch a Monday night game, but... Are you now officially retired? <clears throat> yes, I am. Received Good. my first check and am, uh, you know, proceeding on. Cool. Got a uh, keyboard coming for the tablet I just bought, so I'll be able to start writing again and, uh, you know, working on projects. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Uh, any more drama with the roommate? Nope. Good. No, he's, uh, you know, at work or asleep or away, usually. That's, that's he's a busy great. guy, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, things have been, uh, you know, fine. Just been hanging out, relaxing, calm at the house, playing with the puppy. Yeah. You know. How's the puppy doing? Everything going okay on the puppy front? Everything's going fine on the puppy front, yes. With my puppy, his puppy not so much, but his puppy is destroying the apartment. Well, as long as his puppy isn't teaching your puppy bad things. She is. Yeah. Yeah, so I had to take him to obedience training and, you know, get his mind right. Keep you three days in the box. Get your mind right. Oh, please, just, just one more day. I was just just starting to really get into my stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, good stuff. So uh, I saw one of my favorite movies the other night. What do you see? Darjeeling Limited. Yeah. Wes Anderson. Yeah. Oh my goodness, dude. I haven't seen it. Yeah, his new one's even better. The uh, yeah. That was the name of it. Anyways, his new one, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah. That cinematic masterpiece. That's, like, so borderline for me. What do you You mean? Maybe I'll watch it when it comes on Netflix or something like that. Like, I'm You know, Wes Anderson fan? Well, I'm interested in that movie. One of the reasons is because, like, it looks like such a throwback, you know, to to earlier movies. But those earlier movies... It's a throwback to an earlier time. Yeah. Those earlier movies, I, I wouldn't watch them either. You know what I mean? Uh-oh. So, I'm torn. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm torn. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, at least it's not your throat. Yeah, I I, I watched uh, last night, uh, and I watched it about a year ago too. And I'm just loving this. I'm I'm refining my love to this movie. Yeah. March of the Wooden Soldiers. Don't think I've ever seen it. You've never seen March of the Wooden so- Wooden Soldiers? Uh, I don't think so. Oh my God! Take take um, me through it. Uh, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy mm-hmm. in in Toyland. Uh, okay, yeah, I see that. Oh my God! That you you, yeah. you need to see it again. You need to see yeah. it again. It yeah. is such an interesting piece of work. Yeah, you know where it almost. Well, and it kind of makes sense because it is one like the, one of the first talking movies, you know. Yeah. But um, it has such a, a German expressionist kind of a vibe, you know. <laughs> That's his toys, nine. So it's it's really a bizarre movie. And I've never been, like, a Laurel and Hardy fan, and I've tried watching other things that they've done. I've really not liked it at all. But no, they're, they're yeah, really good that. at this. Huh? I, I'm a big fan of theirs. Oh, you are? Well, then oh, yeah. right up your alley, man. Okay. Then, yeah, there you go. I'll have to, uh, yeah, I think I've seen it before, though, a long, long time ago. 
And then to kind of back that up, uh, Netflix has Babes in Toyland. So we nice. watched that. And these, these, I mean, it, it's, they're both essentially the same story. Yeah. The one just really cannot compare to the other. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> I mean, Babes in Toyland was kind of like a thing of its time, but it, it just doesn't hold up. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's too 1930-ish or whatever, 1920-ish, whatever. You, well, uh, maybe more like 40s or something like that. 40s, okay. It's, it's much more of a stage production, mm-hmm. you know? It's like a Broadway like, musical. Yeah, yeah. Like that or, you know, Seven Brides to Seven Brothers, those kinds of things. Yeah. You know, which really takes a lot of the charm away that March of the Wooden Soldiers has. Yeah. You know. We'll have to check it out. It's on, how did you see it? Well, March of the Wooden Soldiers is on YouTube. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll watch that tonight. Yeah. Go to my page. It'll be in the list. Cool. So, uh, set up for Christmas? What are you, what are you doing? Uh, I think me and my roommate are just going to hang out. Yeah. Yeah, Tim invited me over to his house, but... Since I haven't had Christmas with my kids in three years, I didn't feel like watching two happy little girls open presents, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, our, you know, me and my roommate are probably going to rent some movies and uh, hang out and eat food. It really depends on the presents you bring them now, doesn't it? Mm, no, not really. I mean, if they're all like, what do you get me, Uncle Steve? And they open up the box and it's like a severed head, you know? Mm. Yeah. Or, or like, half a puppy, you know? Yeah. A bloody Nazi boot. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, there's something yeah. I picked up on the way over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope it's your size. <laughs> yeah. Yep, they hadn't heard uh, anything back on Empty yet, or no. Shape of Madness. And when were you supposed to hear? Was there, like, a time frame? Well, I should have heard by this weekend from this one girl. So I'm going to have to message her and see what's up. Yeah. And uh, then uh, waiting on the director of photography to read it. So, Yeah. Taking time, I can't throw things together in a month like my brother Chuck. I mean, he does a lot of pre-planning and shit, and then just all of a sudden says, okay, we're going to shoot it, you know, over this time period. Boom, let's go. Yeah. You know, he's a greater motivator of people than I am. (laughs) You know. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's been happening in your life? Um... Started the other podcast. It will be launching this Tuesday. Cool. Destination Utopia. Um, yeah. Finally got some. Well, you know, I should go through the whole story. Um, so somewhere in this house, mm-hmm. I have a little stuffed black gorilla. Okay. I think okay. I've seen it. The little one with the like yellow eyes or something. I, I have I, I have like three gorillas the same one one's okay. black one's red and one's white okay okay uh, and I'm like you know that black gorilla would be just like the perfect thing to make the harness of the GoPro for the cat because <laughs> it's black fur it would like blend yeah. in hardly anybody would even notice he's wearing it wearing a camera yeah yeah well there you but go. You think, this camera is not too terribly much bigger. It's like two nine volt batteries. Yeah. You know. So, of course, can't find the fucking gorilla. Okay. Uh huh. So I'm like, uh, well, okay, I, I'll, I'll stop at Michael's, and I'll get some craft fur on the way home. You know, because because I am your Christmas. Good idea. Because I am taking a political stance against uh, Hobby Lobby. Okay, there you go. You're not a person. I'm not shopping. <clears throat> Fuck you. Yeah. I'll go to I'll go to Michael's, the more yeah. politically correct place. 
Yeah, exactly. Now, first off, I feel that any of these places, okay, as soon as I walk in, there should be like an immediate announcement like, man in aisle three, man in aisle three, you know? And <laughs> Because they would have to assume I'm lost. Yes, exactly. For being can I help you? Can I help you, sir? Yeah. The restrooms are over there. That exactly. That doesn't happen. So I'm looking around. I'm looking at all the end caps, reading all the end caps, looking to see if I can find crap for or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I find an, and that took a while. And I find an employee. Uh, but she's helping somebody else. So I'm waiting for her to finish helping that person so I can ask ask her about the crap. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so she finally finishes with that woman, and that took a really long time because this woman didn't even know what she was looking for was called. Yeah. Okay? Nice. Well, it's kind of like this, you know, and it's sort of like, you know, and it's kind of, kind of, it's it's sort of shiny, but not really, you know, like, Good luck. Okay, well, this is going to be fucking easy after this, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so she finishes helping that woman, and she starts walking away, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Like, okay, well, I thought you were with her. Okay, justifiable, because I was following you around. Because there yeah. is not another employee on the floor. Because <laughs> the whole time I am following her, I'm looking for somebody else. Yeah. So she's like, okay, well, how can I help you? And I'm like, well, I'm looking for, I'm looking for some craft fur. And she's like, craft fur? <laughs> yeah, craft fur. You, you know, um, craft fur. I, I, you know, like, like you would make a stuffed animal out of. Oh, so you want like the stuffing? No, I want the fur. Craft fur. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I, I I think the word fur kind of covers what I'm looking for. The word preceding it is not nearly as important, but this seems <laughs> to really be throwing her off. Yeah. Craft fur. And then she's like, oh, you mean faux fur. <laughs> Okay. Sure. Okay. Does it have the word fur in it? Let's try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really give a fuck what you call it. <laughs> so now um, she has just, it has it just dawned on her, you know, in the mm-hmm. kind of way where I, I, I picture this happens a lot to her when she puts simple things together and she hears, like, the angels sing. And totally and locks up and just stands there. What? I said totally locks up and just stands there like in a day. Oh, my God. I just yeah. realized it's just something. Like, it's just like, oh, <laughs> ooh, you mean faux fur. You know, <clears throat> I, I mean faux fur. So as we're having this conversation, her manager, who is behind the cash register trying to handle those people, calls mm-hmm. over. And we both look at the manager, and she's like, I'll take care of him. You go on your break. And by the time I turn my head back around, she is gone. Uh-huh. So I'm like, I'm, I'm going to have to talk this craft for a faux fur thing again. Mm-hmm. So do you have a better understanding now of Dante's Inferno? About Dante's Inferno? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It would be an eternity of that. Yeah. Yeah. But to which finally the manager, I was like, I- I'm looking for faux fur. It's like, oh, we don't mm-hmm. have it. <laughs> <sighs> really? Really? Oh. So I just walked out really annoyed, questioning if I will ever take a political stance again. Thank you. <laughs> you know, that's like I don't know, I'm all the time. People piss me off, companies or whatever, and I'll stop doing business with them. Yeah, 
And my daughter always thought it was hilarious. She was like, oh, my God, you're like at war with corporations. And I'm like, no, I'm just at war with businesses that, you know, don't want to do their job, so I don't give them my money. Uh-huh. Or they, you know, they make some outrageous statement, and I don't want to shop there and uh-huh. stuff. And Megan was like, okay, whatever. And then whenever she turned 16, there was this place called the Leech Pit, which was yeah. a vintage punk clothing store. You know it, right? It's still around, yeah. Okay, yeah. Next to it was a place called Pita Pit. Okay. And apparently Pita Pit was trying to run uh, the leech pit out of business so they could take their space up for Pita Pit. They must have done it because leech pit did have to move. Okay, well, my daughter started protesting Pita Pit. We were downtown one day, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm hungry. Let's get something to eat. And she was like, where do you want to eat? I'm like, Pita Pit. She's like, no. I don't need a pita pit. I'm like, why? And she told me, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So, you know, all this time you're giving me a hard time about us not doing business with places. Yeah. <sighs> it has come full circle. It has come full circle, yes. And, and, mm-hmm. and you know, you, you you get mad at shit like that. But, like, you know, if anything defines first world fucking problems, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not being able to get crap for, from my bulls. Yeah. You know, but really what pissed me off is that broad looking at me like I'm a goddamn alien from another world. Yeah. For asking for craft fur. Yeah. In a craft store. Yeah. And, and the word craft was throwing her off. It's, it, it, we have solid evidence that the word that was messing her up in this whole conversation mm-hmm. was craft. Uh huh. Because as soon as you replaced craft with foe, she got it. Mm hmm. So for her, the word fur was incidental. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. She had to, she had to process the first word. Yes. Before, Before she moves on to the second it. is what it, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. What do you mean craft? What's the craft? Yeah. You mean like, you what mean you like witchcraft? About? Yeah, witchcraft. This is Jesus' birthday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or like she's crafting. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So I'm, I'm just thinking from here on in, I'm going to have to like kill and skin my own animals. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Leave their leave their skinned bodies down by the railroad tracks for the hobo. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, I couldn't do that because that could be interpreted that I'm feeding them, and then I can get arrested. Oh, you so. can get well. You can at least get a ticket. <laughs> In some America, it's illegal to feed the homeless. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh huh. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Jeannie found me a nice black stuffed pig from the thrift store, and that'll do nicely. Nice. So uh-huh. we should be seeing cat cam here soon, huh? Yes. Nice. And it was probably cheaper than the craft fur was going to be anyway. Mm-hmm. Now, what are you yes, going to present this on? Uh, what am I going to present it on? Yeah, YouTube, uh, whatever, Ustream, Roku. It's going to be YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Mm. No, not Roku yet. Maybe one day for the Roku. Not sure. Yeah. I have a channel on Roku, and I have a test channel on Roku. Yeah. Nobody could see the test channel, and the real channel sucks. Why? What is it on on there? Um, I, I used an online kind of program thing, um, and it just, it just defaults off to the landline from out of space. And, but it's, it's awful and it's clunky and it's weird and, you know. Yeah. You might as well bite the bullet, break down and, you know, learn another fucking scripting language to do it right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Which which I'm not happy about doing, but, you know, why not? There's a less, there's a lot less competition out there on a Roku, you know? Yes. So. 
Well, there you go. See, cat channel. And then just every once in a while, intersperse a commercial, generate some revenue, you know. Yeah, something like that. Uh huh. You could ask. So, uh, I'm thinking of calling it Ninth Life. Ninth Life. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Ninth Life. Sure. Sounds good. It's a, it's a cat, you know. Does the cat get into a lot of danger? I'm betting he will. We're we're gonna find out, I guess. Oh yeah, it's like yeah. baby cam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. You know. So it's it's a matter of me trying to now figure out how to lock up the crazy cat cat lady demographic. You know. Yeah. And and you know, haul in some real views. Yeah. Um, ad- advertise on knitting sites. Knitting sites. <laughs> Knitting forums just post, you know. My New cat show. For the most part, for the most part, forums are just pretty much dead. Yeah, I know. They're really not even out there anymore. I mean, I've been kind of looking, you know, for things to throw Bob on to try to build yeah. up an audience. Yeah. And there's just not, nothing really out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So there was an article on Facebook by Oprah uh, with Oprah Winfrey. I don't know if you caught that at all. Um, a what? There was an article out there on Facebook floating around mm-hmm. with with Oprah Winfrey. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And it was one of those things that it had like a real just flat out clickbait title, you know? Yeah. And uh, the title was was. Oprah says all white people should die. What? So I got to check this out. You know, I'm just curious <laughs> at this point. But I start reading through the article, you know, and uh-huh. the site, like, we posted the article from someplace else. Uh-huh. You know, so, like, that's not the real title of the article. Yeah. And she is, she's talking about, talking about racism and everything that's going on in Ferguson and all this kind of stuff. And uh-huh. um, she she's like, you know, there are some attitudes that are just not going to go away until the previous generation dies off. Yeah. And I'm like, Oprah understands dying generation. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So I throw it up on Dying Generation, okay? And this is like 11.30 last Sunday night, okay? Uh-huh. So I am uh-huh. up way too late, you know? So I throw uh-huh. it in, into Dying Generation, and I wrote, a, I wrote a whole, like, kind of preamble to it, you know, saying, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, this is really this is really just clickbait bullshit, you know? But the article itself is actually pretty good, and yeah. it, does, it does state from Oprah what Dying Generation is all about. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then I share it, okay? I put it up on, on Dying Generation, and then I share it as myself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay? Because I have more friends and that page has likes, and I want it to come up, you know, Bunny Williams shared Dying Generation link, okay? Mm-hmm. Which is usually what happens. For yeah. some strange reason, it did not happen in this case at all, it just said, Bunny, Gen- Bunny Williams shared a link. And the whole and preamble was gone. Nice. So the next day I'm kind of having to fight about, <laughs> you know, y- you should read the article. No, yes, that is clickbait bullshit. <laughs> yeah. But it's still a good article. <laughs> yeah. Like, son of a bitch. But I- I'm, I'm, I- I'm, going to do something so that we can honor Oprah on our page because she understands Dying Generation. Uh Uh-huh. The first annual uh, Dying Generation Person of the Year? Person of the Year? Possibly. Possibly. 2014? Yeah. Well, that's run now, yeah, so she's not going to have a whole hell of a lot of competition in that fucking race. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm saying. 
<laughs> so. <clears throat> yep, so you have big plans for the holidays? Uh, not really. Uh, we are going to watch um, Guardians of the Galaxy at home pretty much on a perpetual loop the whole day. That's our nice. plan. Nice. Yeah. You should buy yourself a 3D converter box. Yeah. So you can watch it in 3D. Oh, 3D can work for you. Never mind. Yeah, I really can't see 3D. I, I the the last time we saw Guardians of the Galaxy, we finally did see it in 3D, and it's like mm, that's okay, I guess. I yeah. Just, you know, you know, like even what I can see out of it, I don't care. I'm not impressed. It doesn't make a difference to me. The titles. Yeah looked really kind of cool. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Past that, I just tried to watch the movie and try to forget that it was in 3D. Yeah, well, most movies, you you, you know, like uh, was it Rise of the Planet of the Apes, second one? Uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. We're going to watch that tonight. Okay, yeah, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Um... I saw it in 3D, and there was only, like, one or two sequences that, you know, the 3D even delivered. The rest of the time, it just looked like a flat movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, some movies that were made for 3D, which, in actuality, films aren't made for 3D anymore. Films are made, and then they're converted into 3D by real D. Right. Because of the system, exactly. I believe, that was developed at MIT. Yeah. Uh, Media Lab. And you can, uh, in, you can do it in After Effects. It's a real big pain in the ball. So, oh yeah. But you you can up you can up convert to uh, 3D. Uh-huh. Nice, cool. I'll have to yeah. try that. So, um, I I just get the feeling like even if they got 3D to a state where it was absolutely perfect and flawless and uh, amazing and everything else, I still wouldn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I just missed the 3D that jumps off the screen at you. You have to go to IMAX for that. And I'm not talking about, like, popular film IMAX. I'm talking about the science films, like yeah. the underwater stuff that's shot that's actually shot in 3D. You're like, maybe yeah. the head for fish and stuff. You're like, oh, shit. That's the kind of 3D I miss, you know. This is just projecting backward into a box, mm-hmm. you know, to, to show you the actors, like, you know, I don't know, and as if they were like in front of you in a box. Yeah. 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 You know. I don't want them in front of me. I want them up on the screen. <laughs> but when it was in my lap, man, we would have split the ticket. I, I, I want to be able to lose myself in the movie, you know, and not jump out of the way of something that's flying at me. Yeah. I just don't particularly find that entertaining. <laughs> that's fun of that's the fun of 3D. You know, then make the whole movie that. You know, just make the whole movie like like a like a special effect effects clip reel. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. That's all. It just, be. just a bunch of put just a, yeah all the time. Yeah, and yeah. go pay go pay to see that because that's what you want to see and that's what you're in the mood for. And I can see somebody being in the mood for something like that once in a while, like a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. fine. I don't want to be sitting there watching a movie and, like, getting into the movie and trying to get into the characters and the story and all that. And all of a sudden, something, something just, jumps out your face. just flies at me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, that took me out of the fucking moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. We differ in opinion. And once again, first world problem. <laughs> huh? First world problem. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's like I was. I wanted to make this short film that uh, took uh, like photos of the, or not photos, but videos of the citizen from, from communist regimes. Yeah. Like lining up for food for, you know, days or whatever for toilet paper and then, and then switch to a shot of an American shopping mall with people like waiting outside of Best Buy for three days. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, stuff like that totally like reflect back to what 
these people had it like and what, you know, our society is like, you know, about commercialism so much that we would just suffer these same things for, you know, the newest Nikes. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, people breaking into shopping malls. There was a mob that, like, started trying to break down the window of the shopping mall to get the new Nike Airs. Really? Yeah. I and I was going to show, and I was going to show, like, maybe the, uh, you know, some citizens of some, you know, communist country fucking breaking down the gates outside of an embassy or something. Yeah. You know. What, what's important to you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't hear very many people in Ethiopia bitching about the quality of 3D movies. Just you don't. It doesn't happen that much. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, actually. Besides, they're too bothered by the mosquitoes to really get into the 3D. Yeah. You, you hear a lot more of, of things like, you you going to finish that beetle? Exactly. Yeah. That, no, no, that's not half. <laughs> you know. You're squishing out all the good parts. Exactly. I was gonna slurp those. You're gonna break down the oyster the, the oyster of the desert, the beetle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. So, so it seems like we're winding up. Huh? What else have you ordered with your new check? Nothing. Just the keyboard for the tablet? This the 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 tablet was for money I got before I got my check. Yeah. And the uh keyboard is from the money for my check and it should be here like Wednesday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time to finish up Mohawk. Mohawk? Mohawk. But a guy who has a midlife crisis after his wife leaves him and decides to become the punk rocker he was as a yes. teenager. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. got to try and finish that up. Yeah. I'm going to be talking about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can get back on that Wednesday schedule. Hopefully. Because that would be a lot better. This one will be a little rough, but if we could do it this Wednesday, that would still be great. Yeah. Last last night, man, as soon as I got home after the whole Michael inst- incident, I just sat down for a little while and I was like, I need to call, I need to call, and I was like, I just need to go to fuck to bed. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. Because that's, that's what has to happen here. <laughs> cool. But, well, know, I we, think we're about out of time. Uh, for this week, yes, this has been yeah. Dying Generation. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Stephen Scott Norfolk. Uh, Want to hit up your stuff? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, Allie's Ran Red, a uh, horror detective novel on Amazon.com. Dreaded Friday and Other Tales, a collection of short stories on Amazon.com and Kindle. And The Spy and Mob's Clothing under the name Maxwell Robeson on Amazon.com and Kindle. And Haunted Trailer out now with Ron Jeremy. Get a copy. It's hilarious. That's it. See you next week. Be good or be careful. <laughs>